Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Gaming on Caffeine. My name is Isaac, and we are back playing some Feed the Beast Infinity for episode 22. And today, what I want to do is I want to dive in to a brand new, what I guess is a subsection of a mod that I have never jumped into before, and that subsection is bees. Forestry bees, which is this mod over here. There are so many bees and so much stuff that you can do with bees, and we never, ever play around with them. So we're going to change things up this time around, and we are going to do some work on forestry bees. Now, the first thing that we are going to need to get started with the bees from forestry is some bees. Obviously, we need some bees, and the easiest way to get bees is using a scoop. This thing is fairly easy to make, as, as long as you're not making a scooper Porter MX2000 Turbo. That's not the one you want. We want a basic scoop, not a... Uh, Thomic scoop, that's maybe a bit later on down the line, that's from the Magic Bees mod, we want just the normal scoop, this thing is just sticks and wool, really easy stuff, and this is used to break those beehives that you see all around the map, and actually get some bees, so, I believe there are actually three ways that you can get bees out of beehives, there may be more, but the three that I know of are the quarry, if we look over here, we will see that we do have some bees, so for instance, if your quarry happens to break through a hive whilst it's mining all the blocks, you will get the bees from that, so that's a good thing, the second is obviously the scoop and i believe also the mining laser from industrial craft 2 will also do the same thing i think that might have been an old mechanic might not work anymore but you can try it out i guess but the easiest and most surefire way to do it is with the scoop so once you've got a scoop find yourself a, a beehive any type of beehive they all look like this but maybe different colors grab your scoop and then just break it just left click and just break this thing and from that we got ourselves a meadows princess and we got ourselves a honeycomb do keep hold of that honeycomb, we are going to need it, and basically what I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm going to run around, I'm going to break a ton of beehives, fill up my inventory with bees and honey, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so a little while later, I've gone around and I've got a bunch of bees, as many as I could get until my scoop broke, and we've got a fair amount, we don't have a ton of bees, but we got a nice little combination, we got some sorcerers, some unusual, we got a lot of sorcerers, we did a lot of stuff in the desert, so kind of a lot of these are the same, but we also got some modest, which is kind of cool as well, and it's good, it's a good idea to get a nice variety of bees to start with we will probably go around maybe between episodes and get a couple more bees from probably somewhere in that direction probably won't go back to the desert but now that we've got some bees we need to start using them we need to start breeding them and we need to start cultivating our own little army of bees that we can use to our own will so the first thing that we need to get is an apiary this thing allows us to breed the bees together and get more bees it also allows us to breed the bees together and sort of combine their traits and then combine them and then mutate them to get different traits and that's how we then evolve and get different bees that can do different things such as produce jelly cryothium later on down the line not well, jelly cryothium is the liquid such as produce the cryothium dust really far down the line we'll get to that at some point in the future but for now we need an apiary this little guy is pretty cool but it's also fairly expensive it requires a lot of wood and an impregnated casing. The impregnated casing is made of the carpenter with eight logs and 250 millibuckets of seed oil. Seed oil is made not in the fluid transposer. Don't do that. It's made in the squeezer by squeezing really any form of seed that you get. As things from forestry or extra trees usually produce a little bit more. Uh, for instance, I think the walnut is maybe one of the best. Uh, let's see. Can I find that beech nut? These things produce 100 millibuckets, the beech nuts. But the ones that we have, the normal vanilla seeds only produce 10 millibuckets per, per seed, so we are going to need 25 normal seeds in order to get one uh, impregnated casing, so if we go ahead and take a quick look into our barrel of seeds over here, you'll see that we do have quite a lot, I did run around with some bone meal and fill up the whole system with seeds there, so we are, uh, I did cheat a little bit, well it's already cheating, I kind of uh, accelerated the system growth over there, so we got a bunch of seeds, and now we can go ahead and throw those into a squeezer, so of course we are going to need a squeezer, and if we go ahead, I'm just going to go to forestry because if we go ahead and they're pretty much all let's have a look somewhere around here 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 they all are okay so we've got the uh got the carpenter we've got the centrifuge which we are going to make later this episode and uh, we're not going to make the fermenter we're not going to make the moistener but we are going to need the squeezer and possibly the thermionic fabricator but uh, to start with we obviously need the squeezer this thing is a bit easier to make if we look at the recipe over here it's just a sturdy casing which is a bunch of bronze which we might have but probably don't and uh, we can make fairly easily using some copper and some tin like so and then if we craft that into a little chest chip, uh, once we pick up the bronze, we get ourselves a sturdy casing, like so. And then we can combine that up with the rest of the stuff to get ourselves 
a squeezer. I, have, I apologize. I have no idea which one of these is which. So I'm probably going to see me. Uh, you're probably going to see me go across every so often and be like, which one is it? Carpet, the centrifuge. But uh, anyway, once we got ourselves a squeezer, we can go ahead and throw this thing down. I do believe it requires redstone flux. I've got up and set up a little bit of space over here for that. And I think that's right, maybe? Possibly. But anyway, let's try to put some seeds in and see if that works. It does. So I think that's working fine. That has connected, so it is getting power. Not sure if it needs it, but hey, we've got it anywhere. Gonna leave that there to make itself the seed oil, because we need 250 millibuckets of that. And the next thing that I'm gonna preemptively make is this guy over here, the centrifuge. This is, again, a sturdy casing with some bronze, uh, some copper this time instead of tin and glass. So we can go ahead and just make another one of those and then get ourselves a centrifuge. Nice. And you'll see why we need this uh, a little later on in the episode. So we'll throw you there. And then finally, the last thing that we need requires this 250 millibuckets of seed oil. So let's go ahead and get all this stuff ready. We need some logs, which apparently we don't have, but they're all called oak planks. That's why we don't have them. And we should be pretty much good to go. I don't think we need anything else really for the apiary, which is this guy here. We just need, yeah, no, we don't. Uh, you can also find these, I believe, in villages that contain an apiarist. An apiarist village. I'm not quite sure if that's the right terminology. But uh, if you happen to find a village that has that, you... Where's the monster? You should be able to find... Uh, oh, there we go. You should be able to find some apiaries lying around, which you can just take as well. If you don't feel like making all of those other machines that we just made. However, you are probably going to need those at some point down the line. So it's a good idea to make them uh, when you start things off. But we have ourselves the stuff. So let's go ahead and we need to check that i think because in order to make the apiary we need to do this in a carpenter so i'm actually gonna go ahead and put those seeds back in because i think we are gonna need another 250 millibuckets maybe a bit later on but if we go ahead and make ourselves a carpenter and i still really wish that any i wouldn't move things around because for some reason now they're down here carpenter is made with uh, bronze so it's the same recipe again but this time with bronze instead of with uh, instead of with copper or tin and again copper and some tin should get us a bunch of our bronze. Nice. I uh, probably shouldn't have made two stacks of that because we're probably never going to use that much. But hey, that's fine. We need a little bit more glass, which again, no big deal. And then we should be able to go ahead and make ourselves an apiary and get into the real fun stuff with the bees. So we'll take you, craft you into that, and we'll take you and craft you in that as well. And also, we're going to need quite a few apiaries because you'll see in a second once we get our first one going that they are pretty slow. So that's why I'm leaving the seeds going and that's why we kind of set up the wheat farm because it does help with the cows, but it's also going to help us get a bunch of seeds for the seed oil. But now that we've got the carpenter, we can go ahead and grab a bucket, move some of that seed oil over, and we should be good to go. So let's throw you in there. And that's not going to work because it's not enough yet. Ah. Can we, hmm, I think we can pump this round. Do we have any fluid ducts? I think we might. Let's have a look. Fluid ducts. We have three, which I think is just enough. Yes. Okay. One, two, three. That should work. Maybe. We'll make a server and we'll see if we can get this to work. Servo. Let's see. We'll make a basic server. Really easy stuff. Uh, I also do get the Sfax patch for this now, so this is all nice and all uh, Sfax texturized. But we can throw that on there. We can set that to... Ah, oh, really? You don't have redstone capabilities? Really? Really? Uh, that's fine. We should put a lever on it, I guess. Uh, let's see. Do we have a lever lying around? We do. A redstone torch, I guess, would also work. But I'm going to use a lever. Let's throw you right about there. And let's just start to pump that seed oil out. And into here. And it did. Nice. Okay, so we can go ahead and do something like this. That gets us the, um, the the impregnated casing, I think. Missing resources. Resources need what? What are we missing? Let's see. What are we missing? We need the apiary. What? We're not missing, we're not missing anything, are we? Oh, do we, need to, do we need to do this? Ah, okay, so yeah, you got it. This is the pattern. They didn't actually, you'll notice we still have a stack. It didn't actually take any for this. That's just the pattern that you want to use. And then you throw the resources into the bottom section here. I completely forgot. All forestry machines do that, by the way. If we move on uh, later on and do the same thing with the thermionic fabricator, you'll see it's exactly the same. I'm going to take that out for now because I'm not sure if we need some more. And I'm also going to go ahead and, is that finished? It is. I'm not going to move this yet, but I'll probably turn this off for now because I'm not quite sure if we want all of our seed oil in the carpenter. But now that we've got ourselves a uh, this guy, the impregnated casing, we can go ahead and make ourselves an apiary. Nice. 
And basically, this thing needs... It has to have a specific set of requirements. Uh, that it, Well, that, that was just a completely wrong sentence. It has a specific set of requirements that need to be met in order for it to actually start to use the bees. Now, it needs to be placed uh, directly beneath the sun. It needs to be able to see the sky. It needs to be placed within the vicinity of at least one flower. So for the time being, I'm actually going to move this because I want it kind of over here somewhere. And I think that's about it. Certain bees have requirements to where they need to be for instance some bees later on down the line for example the ones that make the jellied bee we have to be in really really cold conditions so like in a really cold biome maybe snow uh, maybe some even colder biomes i guess possibly and, and then like on the other end there's some that need to be really hot i think for the time being if we were to go ahead and combine a modest and a modest princess this should be fine so the way this works is over here on the left, we have two slots where you can clearly see that we have to place some bees. And the two bees that we can put in here are any kind of drone and any kind of princess. So for the time being, we're going to put a modest drone in and a modest princess. That's going to go ahead and instantly do this. The princess is going to go ahead and like devour the normal drone like that. And then what's going to happen here is it's going to go ahead and basically tick down really slowly. It's going to tick down. This green bar is going to slowly disappear. And then once it's gone, we should be left with a princess and two drones. So we'll get an extra drone out of it. And the characteristics of these two bees will be transferred into the drones, kind of mixed and matched. We'll get some, we'll lose some, and maybe even mutated into some better stuff, which we can then use and do again and again and again, and kind of move on down the line and do a bunch of that stuff. What does it say here? It says machine or inhabitants cannot work work in this biome oh okay so that one actually can't do that it says unknown genome let me try a different one if we do sorcerers and sorcerers drone that one looks like it might be okay Yes, the climate seems to be fine. That one's going to go down. So maybe the modest drone doesn't work in the biome that we're in. Maybe it needs to be warmer. Maybe it needs to be colder. Uh, but, but basically, it's not going to work in here. We'd have to move this around to find out. So what I'm going to do now, guys, whilst we kind of wait for this to finish, is I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to make a, a few more of these uh, uh, apiaries. And I'll be back in a second once the first one has reached zero. And we can kind of show you what's going on. So I'm going to do that, guys. And I'll be back in a second. Okay, so a little while later, I went ahead and made five more of these apiaries, set them down, filled them up with bees, and these are now mostly all done. So you'll see once it's finished, we actually get the, the queen back, the princess, which we can then stick back in, as well as three, this time we got three sorceress drones, as well as a mundane comb, which we can add to our little collection of mundane combs. This one did the exact same. We got another sorceress princess and another drone. We'll stick the princess back in there. This one only got us two drones, but that's fine. We also got our princess back, which I believe always happens. And this one got us, again, three to one. Again, three to one. All of these were fairly similar. So we just kind of got a ton of drones this time around. I'm actually going to go ahead and just kind of restart this uh, from the beginning. So we can throw you in there. We can throw you in there. You in there. And we'll just set off most of these going again, like so. And like so. And then this one over here is the one from the quarry, the Rocky Queen and the Rocky Drone, which is still working on its stuff. So we'll come back to that one in just a second. You'll also see this kind of cool particle effect that comes off when all of these are activated at once, which is pretty cool. So now that we've got ourselves some bees, what the heck, Isaac, are we going to do with them? And what are we going to use that centrifuge for? Because we haven't used it yet. Well, that is a good question. The next thing that we are going to make is called the Bealizer. And name aside, this is a really useful item. It's made, again, in the carpenter, this time with 14, two glass panes, two redstone, and a diamond. So if you try to make this early on, it is a little bit expensive, as well as two buckets worth of water. So let's see. Do we have any glass panes? We do. We got these from making those water jars a few episodes back. We'll take two of those. We'll take 14. One, two, three, four. Two redstone, and we should have, I think, more than enough diamonds for the one diamond cost of entry for this thing. Let's have a look. We got four diamonds. I think we got like five more out in the quarry, so we should be fine for the time being. And then, of course, we need some water. So, uh, let's get rid of the lava. Can we just top that in there? No, we can't. Can we get rid of this anywhere? I think we can, but we're going to have to make a bit of a mess doing it. So, voila. <laughs> there we go. Just kind of wasted some lava, but that's fine. So now we've got ourselves the two buckets. Let's just go ahead and take both from here and here. We're probably going to have to break and place this because it does have a little bit of seed oil lying around inside of it, which, and my gosh, this thing breaks through dirt so fast. Jeez. And we also need to charge up our jetpack because it is out of juice. And we should probably upgrade that at some point as well. Anyway, but for now, let's go ahead and throw down the carpenter again. Make sure that it doesn't get any more seed oil for the time being. And we'll fill it up with water. So to put stuff into here without using the fluid ducts, you just stick a bucket up there, like so, 
and like so. Nicely done. And then we can go ahead and throw the diamond in. Two redstone. Again, remember, you got to put it in here afterwards. Otherwise, it won't work. Tin, 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 tin. And then two glass pins. And we should get a Bealizer, which is going to go ahead and take, apparently, a little bit of time to complete, which is a bit of a pain, but that's fine. Don't forget to put down that uh, that flower near your apiaries. I did forget that when I was setting mine up. And also, be aware that they don't work at night. So if we look now, it'll say... Operation is only possible during the day. They do not work at night, so be sure to sleep a lot and don't kind of just leave these running overnight and hope that they'll work. They absolutely won't. So we're going to go ahead and sleep for a little bit. And our thing should be almost done, our Bealizer, at which point we can start doing some cool stuff. Now, for the Bealizer to work, we are going to need some honey. If we look in here now and right-click on this thing, we get this nice little interface and basically allows us to analyze bees, as you may have guessed by the name there. So if we wanted to say analyze this drone, because right now it says unknown genome, we can put it in here. And if we provide it with some honey, it's going to go ahead and analyze it for us. How do we get honey? Good question. Honey is made in, you guessed it, the centrifuge. If we get ourselves the centrifuge and stick any of these combs in like so, it should go ahead and work its way through them. And then it has a chance of giving us honey. Now, that one didn't. And we also need beeswax later on as well. But depending on which comb you use, for example, if we just press U on the honeycomb, the honeycomb has a 90% chance of giving us honey because it's a honeycomb. The, the parched comb has a 90% chance as well, and the mundane comb has a, only a 60% chance, so a lot lower, but still has a chance to get it to us, and because we have so many of them, I'm going to go ahead and throw those in first, and I'm kind of hoping eventually we'll get some. Hey, we did. Nice. Okay, so we got some honey. I'm going to leave that in there because we do need beeswax and honey, and again, you'll show you why in a little bit, but for now, we can go ahead and throw one of these into here, like so, as well as a piece of honey. And we get a bunch of information. So we can see the active and inactive genes within this drone. We can press shift now. And it shows us all the stuff like the lifespan, the production speed, pollination speed, flower type, fertility, territory effect, all that kind of stuff. And what we can do is we can continue to mutate and sort of breed these bees together using our apiaries. And try and evolve them, try and specify and work towards the traits that we want to keep. Like longer life, better fertility, all that kind of stuff. And then we can use those, for, those traits for other stuff. And it just makes the bees a lot better in general. And that's kind of what we're going to work towards with our apiaries. But the next sort of multi-block machine that we're going to work towards after the apiaries is called the alviary. The alviary is not the easiest thing to make, especially not right now. But the alviary is actually a multi-block. Uh, but it's made up of single alviaries, which I'm trying to find. But apparently I'm not going to, so we'll go to forestry. And it's this guy here, it's kind of spelling it wrong. The alveary is made again with another impregnated casing, but this time with eight centered paneling, which is made using a royal jelly, some wood, which I just think three of any plank, a pollen cluster, and two beeswax. So obviously that's why we need the beeswax. The royal jelly, I believe, can be made in a better way than this, but that might not be true. The imperial queen, apparently not. Okay, so we need an imperial queen. Now, there is a system uh, within the bees that allows us to get to the imperial queen. So, if we were to actually go back and look at that again... The Imperial Queen has got the... If we go ahead and look through any aisle a bit and get to bee breeding, you will see that there is an 8% chance of getting an Imperial Queen if we combine a Noble Princess and a Majestic Drone. The Majestic Drone, if we go back again to bee breeding, there is an 8% chance to get the Majestic Drone. That's not the right one. I think if we use the Majestic Queen, we get a Majestic Drone. So there is an 8% an chance of getting the Majestic Queen if we combine a Cultivated Drone and a Noble Princess. Cultivated Drone, again, it'll show us how to make a Cultivated Queen. But that is a 12% if we combine a Common Drone and a Mystical Princess. So do we have a Common Drone? I don't know if we do. We could probably find one, though. And then a Mystical Princess can be made. I think we just find a Mystical Princess. Do we have one? We have Sorceress. I think we might find these. This one is unusual. But basically, we have to go around. We have to find these bees. We have to breed them together a lot to work on those lower percentages, like 8 and 9%. And so we work our way up the bee system and get ourselves one of these bees to make the royal jelly. And pollen clusters are apparently made using industrious queens, which I think, again, are kind of similar. You've got to work your way up using the unwary drone and the diligent princess and kind of keep going like that. And then you've got the, the cultivated drone and the common princess. There are so many bees. We've just got to go around, grab a bunch of them, make a bunch more of these apiaries and just kind of just keep up with them. Just keep going and throwing them in here. So what I'll probably do... Uh, oh, what do we have here? We got... Uh, and it just... Wow, that was just one for one. Really? 
Really? We just got one for one. Let's go ahead and scam one of these real quick. But basically, what I'll probably do now is next episode, we'll probably move on and do something else. But between now and the next time we do Forest Bees again, I'll be setting up more and more of these. I'll be coming back and checking on them every so often, making sure there's constantly more bees breeding and kind of trying to work my way down the line. And then next time when we come back, I'll kind of talk you through how I did it. And we'll hopefully be able to make ourselves the alviary and work from there. We did get some more honey, which is nice. We can go ahead and use our Bealizer again. Let's have a look. Uh, Rocky Princess and honey so this thing we could see uh, is rocky it's got a short lifespan which is not really something we want i think you do have to take into consideration both the, uh, the the inactive and active because i think the active do have a, a chance of passing off into uh, the the breeding if you go ahead and breed them together so that is something we do need to be aware of this thing uh, usually they're both the same but sometimes these can be different the active and inactive but uh, usually if it's a purebred they have active on both sides but i think with that guys that is enough bees for now thanks for watching if you did enjoy the video and you want to see more of the bealizer be sure to like and i will See you guys next time.